Hi everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Arun Singham and I will be conducting today's webinar on Victorian state nomination. Can everyone hear me? If you can, please send me a message in the chat box. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Great, great, great. Actually, sorry about that. We had a technical glitch uh, at 4 o'clock when we were about to start the uh, our Zoom account got locked somehow. Mm -hmm. So I could reschedule the uh, webinar to five o'clock. So now we have uh, most of the people back. So let's start the webinar now. And there is some technical glitch still, so we can't share the video. So, but anyways, we'll go ahead and get the show running, okay? So this webinar is regarding Victorian state nomination for 190 and 491 visa. So just a general uh, disclaimer before we start. So this webinar is for general, it's for general purpose. So we are giving you general information about what is the requirement for the state nomination of Victoria and what is the eligibility criteria. So if your, uh, if your circumstances are extremely different than most of the people, then uh, they advise they in that case, please come and see us in the office and we will be able to help you in the consultation. Okay. So in the general skill migration visas, which are based on your skills, um, there are three visas. One, which is an individual independent visa. And the rest of the two visas are state nominated ones. One right is the state nominated visa, which is has a direct PR. And the other one, 491, is the regional skills work visa. It, it still is the, it still is the nomination from the state, but it's for regional Victoria. Okay, so that's it. So, okay, so what are the steps for one 491 visa? Basically, both of both the visas are pretty similar, except that where are you living in Victoria at the time of lodging the application. So the steps involve the same process. The first step is that we must load an expression of interest, which is also called EOI. That we need to do it with the department, immigration department. The second step is that we load a registration of interest with the Victorian government. If you are living in other states, so you might be eligible to load a registration of interest in that state, for example, and the The third step is the nomination application. Nomination application, the third step comes when we get the free invite from the state, and then we do the nomination application. And once the state nominates us for the visa, then we launch the actual visa application with the home affairs department. At that time, we also have to pay department fee, which is uh, $4,240. And you also get a premium visa A if you already hold a visa in that circuit. So, lodging and expression of interest, EOI, ROI, or nomination is not a visa application, and you are not entitled for a bit or any other rights associated with the actual visa application. Okay, let's, let's move on to the next slide. So the requirements for the registration of interest. So again, remember registration of interest is with the state government, which is the currently it's with the Victorian government that we are talking, we are having this uh, webinar regarding Victoria. So for one ninety visa, the requirements are living and working in Victoria, and you can be anywhere in Victoria. Even if you're living in regional Victoria, we can still apply 190 ROI. Working in Victoria is still level one to or three, no? So 190 visa. So you must be working in a skill level one to or three, no? At least six months in IELTS or in Village must. We must have a assessment in a nominated occupation. So for Victoria, we don't have any specific. Uh, nomination of the uh, occupation list. So Victoria invites every single occupation which is there in the PR list, which is in the SPSOL list or in the MLD list for 190 visa. So 
So even if you don't have a job in Victoria, and we are, if you are lodging one night, supply one night without a job as well, without a skill uh, level one, two, three job, that is only possible for one night. Minimum points we need is 65, including the state points. So the difference in 491 is that you must be living in regional Victoria. When we go, when we say regional Victoria, belong in regional, back in the region, South Grand uh, and Doreen, these areas are also coming to regional Victoria. I go to regional. Although it looks like it's not regional for migration loan. Okay, the so 491, you must be working in skill level 1, 2, or 3. So the exception for 190 that you can have no job and still be eligible, it's not available in 491 R. So for 491 regional visa, you must be in a regional Victoria, and that must be the skill level 1, 2, or 3. The rest of the requirements are pretty much the same. You need six bands B, three for nine, and you must have a skill assessment and total points required is nine points, including state points. So for regional visa for nine one, you get fifteen state points, and for one ninety you get five points from the state. Now we get frequently that what is your skill level one, two, or three. If we define it in very simple terms, uh, occupations that are defined by M score, which is Australia and New Zealand standard classification of occupation, as roles that require some sort of skills obtained through qualification or education. They are skill level one, two, or three jobs. Okay. Skill level one, two, three are not linked to a particular field or industry. They are available in all industries. IT, engineering, trade, accounting, social workers, all sectors have skill level 1, 2, and 3 jobs and positions. It depends on the work you are doing, not the industry you are working in. For example, a person working in a hospital as a security guard, that is not a skill level 1, 2, or 3 jobs. It comes under skill level 4 or 5. Okay, but in the same hospital, if there is a nurse working, then it will come under skill level one. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, right so forward is not clearly visible. Sorry about that. I think today is a day of technical issues. Is <laughs> it better now? It's not better. Okay, uh, now does it make any difference? Yeah, we have everything, but today I think there is something wrong with the technology side of it. So, okay, let's move on uh, to the next slide now. Okay, requirements. Requirements for Victorian ROI. So, first thing we need to load is EOI, and then we need to load ROI, registration of interest, to get a nomination to the government. So, in that case, the requirements are that you must be working in a skill level one, two, or three job. You must have salary slips. To substantiate your claim that you are working. So we need four weeks of daily. But even if we have one week of daily, we can still apply. But at least I would rec recommend that we should have at least two weeks of so that even if we get an invite the next day, so we would have another 14 days to load the ROI. In that time, we can get another two F2 service weeks. So we would need employment contract. For 190 visa, without a job is also possible that you can get a nomination from Victoria government. You are eligible without a job as well. If that is your scenario, please come and see us and we can then guide you further in that scenario. 
Even quarter must still be there. So the age must be 45 or less. English requirement is still there, and valid skill assessment must be there. So we get people that they have got the invitation from the Victorian Zone. Please, we had a case like the person got the one eight five in white, but their skill assessment was expired a month ago. So now even they are in their head, they are not eligible for PR because their skill assessment has been expired, and they were not eligible to even renew it. That is what was. So what are the way out for skill level one, two, or three? So as I said earlier, for 190 visa, without skill level one, two, or three, we can still apply for unwind. But for 491, it's a must. But even if 190 visa or the ROI, we can apply uh, without a job as well, but it doesn't mean that we will be selected for the invitation. So if we have a job, it will certainly help you get the invitation from the Victorian government. So to give you an example, if you have a skill as an accountant, but you are working as an account stable, then it's a skill level four job as per as so. So you are not working in, in, in that case. But if you can change your employer or your same employment to bookkeeper, sometimes it's just a matter of talking to your employer. You might already be doing the job of a bookkeeper, but they have given you a title of account stable. So just changing the designation will help in this scenario. Second example is, for example, an IT graduate, software engineer, or a web developer. They are not in the job in their occupation. Support technician will do because it's a skill level two job as per the school. We get many queries like truck driver, taxi driver, Uber driver. So it comes under skill level four. So they are not eligible. Uh, as a skilled employee, cook is eligible, it comes under skill level three. Okay, so the Victorian State Nomination Program for this year uh, started in August 2022 and it will end on 20 of June 2023. But the Victorian government will stop taking new applications in the month of May. After that, they will only decide from the applications they have in hand. So since uh, till September, the data says the total places Victoria had for 190 direct PR was 9,000. They received more than 18,000 ROI and only 1,173 invitations were given. 82 applications were refused as well. So in some will say, oh, looks like they are inviting everyone, looks like the quota will finish, and I will, I still don't have the skill assessment, I will miss out this year. So this will not happen. The Victorian government, for that matter, have limited number of staff, okay? So they cannot, see they have 100 people staff, for example, we don't know the exact number. I'm just giving you an example, let's say there are 100 people, Staff, and they give all the invitation for 190, which is 9,000, and then 2,400 for 491. Then all that employees will be uh, will be loaded with work. Okay, they will have extreme work to do. They will be extremely stressed for let's let's say for two three months, and then rest of the nine months they have nothing to do. Okay, so it doesn't work like that. So the department or the Victorian department of invitation, they will only provide nomination for the application in batches so that they can handle the work. So it's spread throughout the year. Okay. So what we have seen is they are inviting every month at least two invitation rounds are going on every month on an average. Sometime only one invitation round in the month. So the visa numbers are not going to exhaust until June 2023. So there is no way that they will be able to allocate all the seats before June 2023. So if you have your skill assessment lodged or you're planning to lodge it, or you haven't got down from yet, don't get disappointed. You still have very good chances of 
getting the y is equal to the assessment outcome and below the DUI and ROI. Okay. So till September, only 1100 cases were uh, used out of 9000, which is nearly nearly one tenth, like nearly 15% of the population. So after September, the Victorian government has stopped revealing their data, how many ROI received and how many nominations allocated. So we don't have any numbers after September. But we have grew around 25% cases have been filled. And definitely less than 50% has been filled so far. There's no doubt that they have been more than 55. It's definitely less than 50% cases. Okay, for regional visa, for time one, Victoria has 2,400 places. ROI received are 6,000 so far. So I would say if someone has low points, then we recommend logic for time one and not aiming for 192. 491 has a higher chance if you are sitting at very low point or entry level point. For example, you have 50 points of your own. So you are not eligible for 190 any day. You will have 55 for 190. So 65 points for 491, you have a very good chance of six, even at minimum number of points. Okay, we will take the questions at the end of the webinar. You can in the meanwhile type your question in the chat box. The processing time. So once we launch the visa application with the department, currently the department is processing the skill visas very quickly. So 90% of the application for 190 visa are assessed in 32 days. And for 491, the same 31 days. So they are very quick now. So they are clearing the backlog very quickly. So there is a question regarding individual circumstances. So we get this question that my last visa was refused. Can I apply? Okay. If your last visa was refused, you might be section 14 part. So in that case, historically, you were not able to apply for the other skin migration visa. These are 189, 190, and 491. But during the COVID-19, even now, the government has given waiver. So even if someone's visa has been refused or cancelled, they are still eligible to apply if they have that still accepted. The second most frequently asked question we get is there are no stores, but is skill level one to three. I don't know if my job is falling under this. So please come and visit us. Come and see us. We'll be resuming and current group five. We can help you determine if it falls under one or one to three. Okay. The next question that we get very frequently is I'm not sure if my occupation will be invited. So the thing is, if we don't apply EOI or ROI, we're getting invited invitation anyway. So to get the invitation or to get to have a realistic chance, we must of EOI and ROI. Given the number of visas Victoria has in the quota, we anticipate that people will get invitations sooner or later, even at lower points. Okay, so there are some crucial points to take into account. If you are loading or providing your documentation and getting professional help to a migration agent or you, even if you're doing yourself, please don't overclaim your points. If you are can, if you cannot back them up, okay. The problem is not getting the invite. You can get the invite easily if you provide uh, information or details which are not relevant. For example, if someone says they got eight men in each and I, they might be having 100 points in that scenario, they might get invitation. But when you apply for the visa or the nomination, how would you back up those 100 points or whichever points for that you claim? So that's why only claim the points that you actually have, not like what you can get. For example, if someone took the English test and they are pretty confident, then they can get eight men in IELTS or Hindi 79 each. Until unless you get the score, please don't claim 20 points. 
most of the requirements are to be met at the time of EOI, not at the time of notification, invitation. So again, when you're loading the EOI or ROI, only claim points which you already have. Don't think that you will over the time accumulate the points. Okay, be careful with the declaring annual income with ROI. This is also major mistake a lot of clients make. They tend to claim everything they are making. If someone is working 50 hours or 60 hours of cash work, they include everything in their salary, but there is very specific calculation. We cannot include more than 38 hours, and casual loading is not included as well. So we can help you with the salary calculations and we can properly load your ROI in that thing. You must have the number of documents to include and which factors give your application the best chance to success. We can help you with that. Okay, so professional advice from a registered migration agent who are expert in the field of migration law is highly recommended. CBC clients who have studied bachelor's or master's in Australia and they have invested $50,000 in their education. Now they want to do things by themselves. There is nothing wrong with doing themselves. Okay, but the thing is, if they are unsure or even if they have slight, slightest bit, bit of doubt, it's better to get professional advice because just to save more money on the professional advice, you are putting your career at stake and all the investments so far that you have made that we can also be benefited. Very small mistake in the, and then basically the chances are poor. Department's website only provides very limited information, but everything which is provided there comes from the migration law. So the Migration Act 1950 Act in 1958 is the source. So that is not openly available to the public. We only know the whatever the wording is there. So we can help you as a registered migration agent in that scenario. Okay. So let's go through the questions one by one. So pretty much that is the webinar today that we have conducted. Okay, so, so I'll go through the question one by one. It is asking on 491. Family speak if I still have testament in 19, I am working as a baker and eligible. Yes, you are eligible. For 491 family stream, we don't need any work experience. No man is asking what happens if you get an invitation for all 65 points. And once we start our state nomination application process, our point spectrum 55 because of it, will they reject? Definitely, they will reject the application no matter. Even if you have 65 time of nomination and the nomination is approved, but by the time you launch the visa application, your point has dropped, then the visa application will be dropped uh, refused as well. As someone with a master's degree in urban design applying, could they have no experience if I had picked it up? So L is asking about master of design in urban design. Okay, so L, uh, master of design is eligible, but again, first of all, you need a skill assessment. Only the qualifications are not enough. So first of all, you need a qualification in urban design. And then if you have a job in your occupation, it will help you to get the invitation faster. If you don't have the job in your occupation and you are still working in a skill level one, two, or three job, then you will be second prioritized. If you are not working in skill level one, two, three, skill applies, you will be least preferable candidate for Victorian government. Kiran is asking what are the primary reasons for refusal? Primary reasons are people usually overclaim or their visa or their skill assessment has expired or their English test has expired by the time they get the invitation or they have made a mistake in the application unknowingly, uh, assumingly they put the information they think like this is the right information. So this is the, these are one of the main reasons. Do we have to be, and the other thing is we don't know uh, a lot about refusal. Because 
usually the client to them do the thing they sell they get the refusal so we we get own control like we often get some people who get the refusal and they come and visit us for help okay but we haven't got any refusal so far so jan is asking do you have to be physically in australia at the time of flying ROI? no so basically yeah, we can currently apply for offshore roi as well even for 190 and 494. So from this year only, they have open offshore applications. Julia is asking, I still don't get invited till now for Victoria. I lost Victoria's ROI offshore since August. Does Victoria even invite IPD support technicians? There is very few academic invites for IPD. So it depends on how many points you have, Julia. Okay, and then the ICT support technician, it is in short term list. So only one night or four night one visa can be applied. Usually the department, the uh, tutorial here is uh, inviting. Uh, if they invite IT, they invite software engineers, which are long term list. Sanjana, we live in Victoria. But not in visas, don't have a related job in Victoria, can be applied. If you're living in Victoria, yes, you can apply. You, you can't apply 491. Okay. So 491 is if you're living in regional Victoria, and it is must that you are working in your uh, in a skill level one to three job. People working, okay, nobody is asking people working. Associate or any research related casual job in university, does it come to the level one, two, or three? Research associate. A research associate must be skill level one, two, three, but I can't think all on top of my head. So there are more than six agents in Australia. Okay, so please come and visit us. It's the exact title and your employment contract, and then we can have a look. Iran. I have skill assessment in painting and decorating. I need certificate three. I would settle circuit code at the moment and apply. Yes, you can apply. No problem. Julie, do they need ethical range to apply when you get invited? Or yes, when you when we get invited, first of all, they will be giving you a link to apply for the nomination. After the nomination in the room, then the state government can be a link to apply for the visa. That link is for the uh, high Department of Immigration. Domain. If I am working casually in my nomination occupation, and at the time of nomination, I cannot provide for the state list, your nomination will be refused. Julia. Can your email, can your email, I'll slide up that the presentation. So, Julia, this will be available on our uh, test. You can take a look from there. Thank you. Namrata Dada, is hospitality sales in demand? In case I have a break in work for two years, but have an experience of 50 years, can I still apply? So, First of all, number you will get skill assessment. Okay. If if you have a skill assessment which is valid, then we can apply EOI and ROI. That is first thing. Second thing is, are you eligible to apply ROI? Which means if you apply for 190, you must be living in Victoria and you must be working with skill level one, two, or three. If not, without a job also, you are eligible. For 491, you must have a skill level 1, 2, or 3 group and living in regional Victoria. Hospitality uh, will be invited as well, like basically in old occupation. And who is asking, how can I apply with an with MFA in urban design in the means of overseas? So again, first of all, you have to get a skill assessment. If you have uh, a master degree and then you have work experience, we can get your skills assessed from that effect. Please send, me a, send us an email and I can have a look and then we can 
drive you further. I send you my email ID in the uh, chat box. The process of this. So, Asia shipping group. I will let them Asia shipping group. No problem. And our email ID is also mentioned here in the slide. The next question. Many questions today. Please tell us about the salary one, please. Yeah. So okay. if you wanted to mention the salary, is it like I can mention salary plus super plus yearly bonus or just salary plus super or just the base salary before tax or after tax? Yes, so basically we need to pay for the salary. The salary must be before tax that we need to uh, declare and super is not included in the salary calculation. Okay, if you're doing overtime or something, that that is also not included. Bonuses are not included. But if the overtime is permanent, then we can include the overtime loading. Okay, so okay and and yearly bonus. Yearly bonus we cannot include in the salary calculation. It's exempted. Okay, so it's just a base salary, right? Before uh, before tax. Please tell me before tax, yes. Yeah, okay. And also one more thing, like uh, as a um, job, as a teaching associate in university as a casual, can can I mention? It depends on the case, like what is the job you have. So maybe you can visit our office and then I can have a look and I'll let you know first, right? Okay, okay. Arunji? Yes. Uh, sorry. No, I sent two, three time message like uh, I have 80 points, including state one. And yes, we haven't raised your question yet. Yeah, I already sent you message two, three time like 491 I, EOI already apply and ROI in system analyst in we, IT. You haven't raised your question yet, Mantri. Ah, you haven't raised. Okay. So, okay. so mere yes, is valid four years for four years. Kinto is asking for a general practitioner, do over the experience you know, for the application. It depends on the points, how many points you one pre priority point including take, applied for nine when you are in the system analyst, working as system list, what are the chances? You have good chances of getting the invitation, one pre. If you apply in August, you need to wait. And uh, if you think August 2021, not this August. So, 2020, if you apply, then basically it is not valid at all. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I reapplied. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah no. I applied it and I reapply now ROI again. Yes. After in this. Yeah. Invitation at this point. That's fine. Yeah. But we don't know what you provide in the application. So, we can't submit on the contact of it. But at 80 point for 491, we should get the invitation. If everything is right. Can we follow up the department about EOI? No, we can't end up. For example, apply for one no, we can't follow up. And your fee structure, how will you think? The fee structure depends on the work we do. So it's not like the, it's a, not a big fee for every single time. It depends on how much how much work will be required in a single application. Accordingly, we use the fee potential. The chance how often does the invitation now happen? If we load EOI today, the chance of getting invitation with a big way. So, uh, the chance we don't know which occupation you're talking. So, what is that? Mantri, same question, Hira Ari. Pretty contract as an accountant with small firm. Making contract, do you have the daily contract? No, we don't have the daily contract. Every employer has their own uh, set of rules. And they have their own format. And then can I change UI after getting education? No, we can't change UI after 
the AVT engine in VC, because there is get loss. Here I have CVP options, are we eligible to apply? Yes, we can apply also. And I've got AC plus as a chef, apply it even last February, still no reports on the process. No, we can't follow up. It's, if you select it, you will get a report, otherwise no. I have completed because thousands and thousands of people have applied for UI. So department cannot just uh, give update on every single person. They just do their work. They see the profile. If it is uh, eligible, they will apply. I have completed my master's in IT and about to start PY. But I am planning to move to Rizzo. Confused where to move. Okay, so Sanjana, basically, if you have an idea and you're doing the PY, until unless you complete the PY and get the skill assessment done, uh, there is no point moving anywhere. Okay, if you do PY in Windsor, Victoria, or anywhere, it's the same thing. And by the time you complete your PY and get the skill assessment, most probably the uh, migration program will change twice by that time. So we don't know what will be the future that time. Rajas, if I did two courses, any of point counted for two courses? Uh, Rajas, for the education, we can claim points for the highest. If someone has done two bachelors or two masters, the points will only be uh, claimed for one masters or bachelor. Okay, then yes. so if we're asking again, but if I want to apply one night DEOI for all doors, then can I apply it while I'm on vacation or so temporarily? Yes, that is possible. Yes. Kiraj is asking if painting and decorating, yes, it is in the list. Irish are then building design for 1990 and 491 domination. Usually, building with the e holder. Can apply for nomination and can get the nomination, but they will not be eligible to apply for the visa application with the department. So that visa will be refused or it will be invalid for so and you will get your money back if it that is the case. So now we can be can we apply for R2, ROI? No, we can Sorry, your voice was not clear. Is painting and decorating is in the list? Yes, it is here. Okay, thank you. All of the occupations are in the list. Thank you. Okay, go move to the point. And do my qualification and do my point. The highest qualification will be taken for the point. And here in the health research and researcher for the nomination, yes, they are falling under the category of nomination here. Bilas, I'm living out in Australia. Can I still apply? Yes, you can apply. Bilas, you are eligible under option C. Please send us your email and then be further with that. Okay, uh, I'll one more time with the chat box. Okay, so everyone. Okay. Okay, Bilas, I'm concerned. For phone line one, uh, do we have to uh, do a related job? The job doesn't have to be related to your occupation, but it must be a skill level one, two, or three job. Will there be invitation round this one? Yes, there will be one invitation round before this one. We highly dictate that. So just take it uh, for your reference. Some people uh, join the webinar late. So I'm sharing this slide. So what is skill level one two or three? Consider is asking at the type of loan in EOI. Do we need to leave our decision for getting in what access? So consider the basis of loading EOI is that you must be living and working in Victoria over 90. And if you are planning to loan 491, you must be living in Windsor, Victoria. That is the that is the requirement and the type of loading EOI. Not at the time of invitation. Okay, anyone who has uh, missed, uh, they can unmute themselves and ask me a question now. We will wrap up this uh, session.
just the last question for my side yeah i got a refusal from my previous visa for 48 baht so if i wanted to apply for 190 or 491 uh, i have to go outside of australia uh, while submitting roi or while after receiving the visa application like what is the condition okay so which have you already got an invitation no, 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 nothing. So I, I have apply. I wanted to apply for ROI, and uh, if in case if I receive my visa and sub, like I receive the no, uh, nomination, and want to submit the visa, if that what kind of scenario I have to go outside of Australia or I can apply inside Australia? Yes, you can apply to leave Australia for that. So I can live in Australia. I can apply. There is no any restriction now. Yes. Yes. So is this that rule has been changed recently or this year? So it is already it has already been always been here. General skill visa are exempted from section 48. Okay. Any other question from any other person? Uh, good afternoon. Yes. Oh, yes. Sorry. Uh, hello. Uh, hi. I couldn't hear you at the last time your voice was breaking. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, yep. So I have one question. I am sitting at uh, ninety points. I have done my profession. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the problem is I, I am not working in a field related job. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the chances of getting 190 or 491? Uh, or should I, I'm looking for a job now in IT industry. Uh, what, what is your advice? What Which occupation you have? Uh, I have, uh, 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 I have software engineering skill assessment, uh, ICT specialist, and system analyst. Three skill assessments. So basically, you have a good chance of getting the invitation, but you need to work on your job part. So you are eligible to get the invitation, but being eligible does not mean that you will be invited. So if there are not enough candidates who have got civil engineer or let's say uh, software engineer, and they are not working as a software engineer, and then your number will come. Otherwise, they will obviously invite people who are working as a software engineer. Okay, so it is a skilled visa, 189, These are for skilled people. If someone is a civil engineer and working as a Uber driver, they will not be. Mm -hmm. They are even if they are eligible, they will not be invited. Because then basically the government's motive is not getting fulfilled. They are not meeting the skill gap. So if they uh, have no one to invite, then only they will decide, they will invite these people. Obviously, uh, yeah. Yeah, so myself I'm I'm looking for a job now. Uh, at this time. So if I get a job uh, for next year, is it a big chance to get the invitation from next year? We don't know what will be the rules next year, my friend, because in July 1st, the rules will change. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what the government will decide. Okay, so last year, Victoria had very, very different rules. So this year onwards, we have different rules. Okay, so this year is much, much easier to get the invite. So what will be happening next year, we are, no one knows basically. Okay, yep, thank you. Hi, I have a question. If I apply in painting and decorating with skills assessment, how long do you think um, uh, I will receive an invitation? Because I'm on a federal circuit court, I can't have much time on my side. Have you already applied for skill assessment? I've got my skill assessment, uh, it is ready with me. Uh -huh. Um, and I've got certificate three and skill assessment with me. I've given my PT examination today, so I'll be having results in a couple of days. So mm -hmm. I, I have all the documents required. If I apply, how many weeks or months do you think my invitation will have? Um, will I receive the invitation? That is a million dollar question, Sira. So basically, 
question i'm mira i raised my hand um before this girl um I, yeah i wanted to ask you is it possible to do professional year on covid visa if someone has one year validity usually no the the institute to provide a professional year they will not take the admission on covid visa they will not allow it. because the covid visa condition has unlimited study and work rights so it they don't allow usually they don't allow we tried with one of the students then they said no oh i see and um, regarding my last question so if we are on show are we eligible to apply offshore visa like for example for dav in accountant criteria is quite easy if someone applies from offshore like the criteria itself so, so Australia. So hey? we can apply offshore if we are in Australia. If we are in Australia, we can apply as an offshore candidate or not really. We can't. We can't. No. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. We do that. Most probably the visa will be refused. Okay. Yeah, if we do that, then ten, fifteen thousand people will apply offshore. <laughs> yeah no no like if we get an invite and then you know i i because there's a 60 day time need to respond so you know if i move back if i get the visa if i mean i've been here for a very long time so pissed off with studying two diplomas two masters and the fifth one is maybe starting anytime soon <laughs> yeah. hi arun uh, sorry at the last time i couldn't hear you properly what you are saying regarding that 48 bar so even though if i got refusal on my previous visa and mm. right now i am on my bridging visa so if i get the invitation or nomination 
I don't need to leave Australia to apply one one ninety visa application, right? Yes, yes, you don't need to. Okay, is it the rule has been changed recently or it's been from last year? The rule has been like that from last twenty years. Oh, okay, okay. Or if the visa has been re refused due to the GTA, then sorry for general, you know the GTA condition or it GTI matter, condition. Doesn't matter why the visa is refused. If the visa is refused and you are section fourteen bar for general skilled migration visa, you can still apply one eight nine one nine six. Okay, okay. But if I wanted to apply one eight six, then I have to leave Australia, right? Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. Then you asking, I did half of my PY on building with a C with no restriction, and then half of my file defined. Because you are up, you applied for point by visa. So that's fine. It's not about if you're doing it, it's about getting the admission there. So if someone is on COVID visa, so the institute you provide for VPY, uh, they will not. Uh, they will not take admission as the policy guidelines given to them. No, okay. thank you. Okay, thank you everyone for coming today. And uh, you can open on Facebook and all these slides will be Facebook as well. Or you can email me on the email address that I provided if you have any specific question and I can help you further with your journey towards the art. Sorry, Arun, I just have one quick question. So you said about uh, 189 and 190, like you know the how it works. So if you work in the specific skill assessment, they prioritize the visa for you. Is it same apply for 491 as well, or is it just for 189 and 190? Which you're talking about? Uh, sorry, I didn't get your name. Okay, so Lalji. So um, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm doing uh, for regional, so I'm not working in the IT industry. But I'm working for skill level one, two, three. Uh -huh. So, is it good chance, or do you think I should look out for the job in IT? If you're working as a skill level one, two, three employee in this house, yes. Have, then your application, you are eligible to get the invitation. Then okay, other, but is it yes? Then depends which of you have, how many points you have. Okay, and okay. then it depends on the that those factors. That you will get the invitation. Okay. It's better to see you in person then. No worries. Thank okay. you. Thank you. You have a lovely time ahead. Uh, sorry, Mr. Ayurun. Hello. Yes, the last question. I will take the last question. Yes, tell me. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, yeah. uh, I am living in the United States. Arab Emirates, uh, I mean outside Australia. So, can I still be able to apply for 491 or 190 visa? Yes, you can uh, apply for 491190 uh, in Victoria if you're living also. No problem. No problem whatsoever. Eh? Uh, uh, any other state? So, have you got a skill assessment? Yeah, yeah, I have. Which occupation? Uh, I am a civil engineer. Okay, then please send me an email. We can give you a quotation for mm -hmm. services from EOI, ROI onward. And we mm -hmm. can give an ROI for you. And you can mm -hmm. invite it also. We have oh. invitations. Even today, I got an invitation for a chat. You mm -hmm. got 70 points. And also, for a private invitation, please see. Okay, but I have a problem with the assessment because the assessment was done in uh, uh, 2018. Okay. So, according, so according to the Home and Affairs uh, Department, it is expired, right? So I already submitted for yeah. the... Uh, it is the starting yeah. development. You have a skill assessment and you said yes. If your skill assessment is expired, the course answer is no. You don't have a skill assessment. First of all, the skill assessment needs to be done. And then you reassess reassessment, right? Yes. I already applied for the reassessment, and hopefully I will get uh, it uh, assessed soon. Then I will contact you. Okay. No worries.
thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Enjoy yourself. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Bye-bye.